Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here and 4Ks, and today I've got a few from Paramount. Three 4Ks and a Blu-ray steelbook. Uh, let's get into this. The one that's most appropriate for this time of year is Scrooged, uh, directed by Richard Donner uh, from, I believe, 1988, <clears throat> if I recall. And... Um, this one is something of a holiday classic now. It is a 1980s retelling of the many times told um, Christmas Carol story. In this case, it's been updated to uh, rope in. As opposed to the Scrooge character, we have a TV executive played by the great Bill Murray in one of his most notable performances, um, movie opens really in a funny way with some pitches of things that are to play on his network. And one of them is The Night the Reindeer Died with, <laughs> with Lee Majors. There's machine guns at the North Pole. Um, I even asked my friend um, Josh Miller, who's one of the writers of Violent Night, if you know this might have been an inspiration for that film and he said that it indeed was not but that said uh i think that's the closest thing that has ever gotten to violent night you know and i i think violent night's a great movie in fact i wish i had a 4k of that to talk about uh right now but that said Scrooge, very funny movie um murray's character is a workaholic and an incredibly um thoughtless man uh who is of course taught the meaning of christmas by being shown the ghosts of christmas past present and future and the way that he reacts to that of course is with indignance and uh <laughs> and just general um sort of flabbergastedness you know not being able to really deal with it but uh the christmas past it's played by uh let's see i'm gonna get these right i think David Johansson, I think, is Christmas past. Uh, is it... Let's see here. I'm trying to remember who is Christmas present. Um, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. But but anyway, so he goes through... He, we go through his life. We get to see what he was like in the 70s, uh, I want to say, or the 60s when he was sort of coming of age and finding his way into television. And... Uh, this time I actually noticed a couple things in the past and present versions of his life. Um, one was just a stupid little aside that I thought was very cute was he does something where he's playing a dog in a suit as part of like a kid show and the set for the dog show um, has like a tree on it and on the tree it says uh, Dick plus Lauren in a heart which is obviously a reference to Richard Donner and his then wife, um, <clears throat> Lauren Schuler Donner, which I thought was just a cute little aside. And the other thing I thought was funny that Carol Kane, I think plays present and, um, she takes him to the, um, sort of, sort of like a homeless shelter type place that his former girlfriend played by Karen Allen is working. And, um, a bunch of the folks there who he dismisses pretty, outright as, as kind of crazy um, are asking him, they think he's Richard Burton and they're asking him to do lines from uh, Where Eagles Dare and The Sandpiper, which are actually two movies that, you know, I wouldn't have had a clue about in 1988, but are now actually two among my favorite Richard Burton films. And he's done a lot of great films. So I thought that was funny a joke that I never got until this time. Um, 4k looks very nice. Uh, it is, um, Let's see here. It has a commentary from Richard Donner, which is very good. I really, I'm a Dick Donner fan. I like his stuff. You know, he's made um, a lot of big movies, and uh, I enjoy his work. Uh, something called A Christmas to Remember, updating Ebenezer, uh, bringing the ghosts to life, um, talking about sort of makeup stuff, the look of Scrooge on set with Bill Murray, and Show West clips with Bill Murray, which is pretty funny too. These are all included on the Blu-ray. This, of course, it has a Blu-ray. I'm sorry, this is all included on the 4K. This is just a 4K and a digital code. So no Blu-ray included in this. 
uh, package here, but it's nice to see this holiday classic updated from Paramount. Um, and glad to have it in the 4K collection now. Again, Bill Murray just, I don't know, he's always funny when he's a jerk, and he can play a jerk really well, <laughs> and he plays an epic jerk in this movie. Um, so many great scenes of him being awful to people, including Bobcat Goldthwait's character, Elliot Loudermilk. Uh, really good stuff. Um, anyway, happy to have this on 4K from Paramount. Very nice looking uh, transfer, uh, on this one, and it's, uh, Dolby Vision, is it Dolby Vision HDR? Yeah, it looks like it, yep. Yeah. So, very nice, uh, new 4K of that. Then we have Titanic. This is part of, um, something I think a lot of us have been waiting for, which is a group of home video releases, uh, the other ones are going to co be coming from Disney uh, next year, but they're long overdue. A couple, um, you know, that never got Blu-rays, including The Abyss and True Lies, are getting nice 4K updates, uh, I want to say February or March in 2024. I look forward to those. Aliens also getting a 4K, finally. Um, but Titanic has had a lot of releases and as a result, this is a pretty nice addition of it because there's been so much already done. But this is the new 4K of Titanic. Uh, you know, Cameron's epic, incredible blockbuster, still one of the most uh, successful films ever made. And, um, you know, a, a solid movie for what it is. You know, a really interesting portrait of a romance aboard the sinking ship Titanic. And one of the things I love about it is that it's Cameron's obsessed with this ship. He's obsessed with the real Titanic and his passion for the story and sort of finding the real story and trying to use as much true to life detail as he can uh, in the production of this film down to like props and, you know, speculating on how the ship broke in half above water as opposed to underwater. Like there's a lot of things that, have to be speculated on. Of course, there are survivors of Titanic, but uh, there some of the details are still not fully known. Obviously, it is known that the ship did break in half. It's a matter of like when that happened. But if you watch uh, A Night to Remember, which is a really great Titanic movie from the 50s, I want to say. I, mean, I want to say it's 50s, um, which is definitely an inspiration for this one and which Cameron acknowledges and, and I think definitely took some things from. Um, they they paint the sinking of the ship a little differently. It goes down in one piece. It never breaks in half above the surface. Uh, but I do think that dramatically that choice, you know, true or not, but I believe he believes this is how it actually happened. So he's not doing it just for dramatic license. But the idea that the ship breaking in half is such an incredible, um, scary disaster movie moment, you know, just having all these people on this deck of the ship as it tilts first 45 degrees, then snaps back, and then tilts up vertically, and then sinks. Uh, just a really remarkable sequence in terms of how all that plays out, on top of which you have, you know, star turning performances from Kate Winslet and Leo DiCaprio, who were obviously not in their first features, but certainly broke out big time because of this film. Um, yeah, just a really delightful, r emotional movie. Great score from James Horner. Um I really enjoyed, I, I checked out the commentary, which goes back to, I think, the 2005 release. Uh, there's multiple commentaries here. There's one with James Cameron, and then there's another one with, um, I want to say, uh, some historians. Um, oh, it's got three audio commentaries. Uh, but as far as the 4K, there's the Cameron commentary, and then there's the... Um, these historian commentaries, they're obviously giving, you know, facts about the real Titanic, which, to be fair, actually Cameron kind of does that in his track, too, as he goes. He's very specific about both behind-the-scenes stuff. This is a, you know, a, an effects shot. This shot was really expensive. Um, talking about the performances, talking about all kinds of details about the actual ship and the maybe some compromises they had to make or some things he found out after the fact that changed, things like that. 
Um, it's it's a I just I'm a I appreciate him a great deal as a filmmaker and and you can just feel his passion in this commentary. So that's a really great track. But the I forget what the third audio commentary is. Um, but um, we also have a uh, new documentary, Titanic Stories from the Heart, featuring new interviews with James Cameron, John Landau, Kate Winslet. I want to say it's about 40 minutes. So that's brand new stuff. And I think they're porting over all kinds of uh, other features um, from uh, previous releases. And this has had a lot of great stuff uh, as part of its releases in the past. Um, yeah, really, 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 really nice release. And again, it looks really good. Uh, a beautiful three-hour epic looking wonderful in 4K. So that's Titanic. Then we have Terms of Endearment. This is the last 4K I have. This is uh, James L. Brooks's film from um, 1983. Uh, a multi-award winning film and his first uh, feature. He had done the script for Starting Over, which was directed by Alan J. Pakula, starring Burt Reynolds. And um, that was a big deal for him. I think he was also working on Taxi at the time. He was a big TV guy. He would continue to be a big TV guy. Um, but this is his first film and it just destroyed at the Academy Awards the next year. Best Supporting Actor win for Jack Nicholson. Best Actress win for Shirley MacLaine. Best Adapted Screenplay for James L. Brooks. Best Director for James L. Brooks. Nominated uh, it got Best Supporting Actor for John Lithgow. Best Actress, Deborah, Deborah Winger. Best Film Editing, Best Production Design. I'd forgotten that Polly Platt uh, was the production designer on this. Not a surprise. Uh, I should have remembered that, that she has a long association with James L. Brooks. And I remember when hearing Wes Anderson talk about getting the deal for Bottle Rocket, uh, Polly Platt, I want to say, was part of that, part of them getting it. You know, it was her belief in them. And, uh, and James L. Brooks obviously helped make that film happen. But anyway, the production design is excellent, as usual, for her. Um, based on the novel by Larry McMurtry, totally forgotten about that. And I will say this about the movie, shockingly, I hadn't seen it. Uh, I've always thought that I had seen it, uh, but it was one of those that's a tearjerker. It's about, uh, ultimately about terminal cancer, and it's interesting because it's a very tough tonal balance that Brooks strikes with comedy. Like he ostensibly ha has said and says he's made a comedy, um, but it, 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 it does play a lot of heavier dramatic moments. It's mostly about the relationship between this mother and daughter played by Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger as they uh, grow older. Um, and as Shirley MacLaine is shown to be sort of a selfish woman, a very needy woman who puts her needs in front of her child's needs. But Deborah Winger is surprisingly supportive and resilient and loving for her mother. Um, another part of the story is that the Shirley MacLaine character f sort of starts falling for an astronaut or a former astronaut played by uh, Jack Nicholson who lives next door to her. So that romance is a whole thing. Um, there's some very funny moments throughout the film that involve various characters. Jeff Daniels plays uh, Deborah Winger's husband. Uh, he's a teacher and eventually moves the family away from Shirley MacLaine, which you know becomes a thing. And there's infidelities and there's lots of lots of drama throughout, but there is a lot of great comedic moments, as you would expect, great character moments that uh, James L. James L. Brooks is sort of a master at, you know, looking for and helping create. Um, but obviously you have great source material in Larry McMurtry, you know, based, you know, his stuff has been the fodder for many films, including The Last Picture Show, which I talked about recently here. Um, but it's a good movie, you know, I mean, it's good performances and I can see why it was such a big deal at the time. And uh, the Blu-ray, I'm sorry, the 4K, this includes a Blu-ray and a 4K. Um, the Blu-ray has a new filmmaker focus is an interview with James L. Brooks. It's about 14 minutes and it's, it's neat. I mean, there's a lot, definitely some crossover with the commentary. There's also a commentary that from an older disc with he and, um, Polly Platt 
and co-producer Penny Finkelman, Cox, um, which is a great commentary track as well. But definitely some crossover with that, with the interview. But he talks about, you know, his naivete as a young filmmaker making his first film and how that naivete um, kind of helped him get through this movie and allowed him to make it. And if he hadn't had that, maybe he wouldn't even have tried to make this movie. So um, it's, it's a pretty, pretty great first movie for somebody to have. And obviously he would go on to a, a great career of, of wonderful films like broadcast news um, that would come after this. But yeah, this is, a pretty solid start, I will say. Um, he does a lot of local casting, apparently. That's something that comes up in the commentary. A lot of the key roles, some of um, Sharon McLean's other suitors are local, uh, I want to say Texas actors. I think it's set outside of Houston. Um, and there's some other, like, uh, sort of a maid character and some other people that he's able to find those locals that really effectively carry the tone and and they're able to you know find their way to work with these bigger actors and feel just natural in a certain way um but yeah a very moving film um and one that looks nice on blu-ray i will say that it has this certain i don't want to say foggy look but it's almost like uh i think i saw the same kind of thing uh when i when they put out the blu-ray of uh ordinary people it's just a little, it may have to do with film stocks around that time, I'm not sure, but it's it's just a little, uh, has almost like a glow about it, especially the opening sections, which may be more deliberate, but um, but yeah, it, it looks good. Uh, again, as good as I've ever seen it look. I haven't seen the film uh, fully prior to this, but I've seen parts of it, and it certainly looks very good. Um, so a very nice uh, release of a, a, a multi-award winning film on 4K, that's Terms of Endearment. And then lastly, we have a Blu-ray a very fun Richard Linklater film, a 20th anniversary steelbook edition of School of Rock, uh, of course, starring Jack Black, uh, co-starring Mike White, who's the writer of the film, uh, as well as um, some really wonderful kids. Uh, Joan Cusack plays the uh, principal of the school where Jack Black's character starts teaching. Sarah Silverman is um, Mike White's character's girlfriend. Basically, the idea is, Jack Black is sort of a losery guy in a band who's been mooching off his friend Ned Schneebly for years, living in his apartment, not paying rent. Now he has a girlfriend played by Sarah Silverman, and she's demanding that he, you know, put some pressure on the Jack Black character to get him some money, pay pay his way, pay the rent, or get out. Um, and so Jack Black, you know, is trying to do that, but gets kicked out of his band and happens to intercept a phone call from a school that's looking for Schneebly because he's a substitute teacher. And in this case, they're looking for somebody to sub long-term for a teacher that's, that's just broken their leg and is going to be out. And this is Joan Cusack calling. He pretends to be Ned Schneebly, takes the call and goes to teach. And of course it's disastrous at first, but then he finds his way to being more of a music teacher and he puts together uh, this group of, well, the kids are the, the class, but he's able to pr- sort of get them excited about music, teaches them about music, uh, specific bands, specific, you know, periods of time in music. And then they start playing music and, you know, it, it's got a concert scene. It's a, it's a really sweet little movie. One of my favorite Linklater films. And I, I've always liked Mike White as a screenwriter. And so this is of one of his bigger Hollywood movies, apparently one that he wrote directly for Jack Black. I, I don't know if they, I think they used to be neighbors and Jack Black was in Orange County. And then Mike White said, I want to write something for you. And he wrote this and I'm so glad Linklater took it because I really feel like in other hands, it wouldn't have been quite as good a movie. Um, and he really does a nice job with it. And there's a commentary with Jack Black and Richard Linklater on this disc, which is really a lot of fun. I like that a lot. There's also a kid's commentary. We have the actual kid actors. Um, I, I can't remember how these kids were cast, but a lot and there are a lot of unknowns uh, or lesser known actors, and they really do a great job. Lessons of school uh, on lessons learned on School of Rock, Jack Black's pitch to Led Zeppelin. Um, they wanted to use a Zeppelin song, and so he has like a, a, a pleading for it, basically. Uh, School of Rock music video, Kids Video Diary, Toronto Film Festival, MTV's Diary of Jack Black, and more. And so this has got a Blu-ray and a digital code, and this is a lovely steelbook 
with Jack Black on the cover. Uh, but a, a movie that I like very much and which I think has a good following but could always use uh, a little bit more of a boost as far as I'm concerned because it's it's quite a gem. So closing out with School of Rock, um, big thanks to Paramount for these and um, thank you for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.